Hello, thank you to everyone watching this channel. This is Conspiracy Kyle. I am now all seeing Kai. The brand changed along with the profile picture. I want to thank everyone so much. In just over a month, I've now had over 500 hours of watch time and over 30 subscribers and growing. This channel is doing so well. I am so thankful to all of you. I just hope I can keep on finding videos that you're interested in and Keep commenting, keep liking, keep subscribing, I'll keep putting more stuff out there. This is just my first attempt at a voiceover, so let's see how it goes. And you are forgiven. Facial expressions obviously give away a whole host of non-verbal information, and there are companies who are trying to uncover your hidden reactions to better market their products. Emotional data can be used against us because we always feel something. So although we think we are logical beings, uh, research shows that even when we are not aware, or we, even when we are not conscious, we always have a feeling about things. We like it or not, we dislike it or not, and that actually affects our decisions, affects even our learning, our attention, all of that. <laughs> Your emotional responses are a key component in purchasing, even if you don't realize it, and companies want that crucial emotion data. Now that's scary. Welcome to the world of neuromarketing. I feel like that's illegal, or it should be. Hey Siri, do you have a soul? Sorry, I've been advised not to discuss my existential status. Wait, but what's the real answer? Because arguably this is what we want in all of AI, right? What do we want out of AI? Something informative. Something that responds to what I say and do. Something that makes me feel less alone. But that can't be all AI is supposed to be, because all of that already exists. So what next? The soul machines. Now, a lot of my concern isn't even for the technology itself, because technology is neat. My concern here is that the government definitely has access to this type of technology. Whether we know it or not, whether we want to believe it or not, we all know that's true. And even if it's not the government they show on TV, the shadow government. I mean, look what happened with Edward Snowden. Look at what he exposed. Why do you think he's gone? So we know the government has been spying on us, and now they have technology that... Aside from just webcams they're spying on, now they're monitoring facial recognition. Emotion and data are combining in ways that will radically transform our relationship with machines. That could be advances in medical diagnoses, or just to learn more about our strange human sense of humor. My apologies. <laughs> And imagine this, in the future your emotions could influence the things that you watch. Jane Copesake has been to see a film where the plot changes depending on your reactions. As our world becomes more augmented by technology, the lines between fiction and reality are blurring. Very soon we may be able to entertain ourselves in these new realities simply by using our thoughts. I'm here at the University of Nottingham where I might just see the greatest film that's ever been made because it's being made by me, using my brainwaves. This must be it. This tiny adapted caravan is where I will watch the movie my mind would most like to see. Um, so we're just going to fit you with this EEG headset 
clips on and then there's a sensor on your forehead as well. So this EEG headset's monitoring my brain activity? Yeah, it picks up EEG data, the really tiny electrical signals sent off by the firing of your neurons. So the signal's good, we'll press play, enjoy. I remember you would become all these different people. There are three simultaneous narratives that my brain can dip in and out of to make up a unique film, with over 101 trillion possible combinations per viewing. Is that my brain activity now? This is your data, yeah. So you can see um, like your alpha waves, uh, your gamma waves, your beta waves there. And they're just um, sending out a string of numbers. The more. And again, it seems so cool, but this is so scary. I'm looking at the future of technology as it could be an incredible asset, but it could also be weaponized horribly. I have never seen a movie go well that uses this type of tech. The more focused my brain is, the longer the scenes are and the more the narrative holds together. If I lose focus, the computer cuts the scenes more rapidly. So it's a pretty surreal experience watching a film that you're creating as you're going along. The whole concept behind this, this project as a whole was, it was inspired by what was happening with these um, social media bubbles that were um, that are still about but during like 2016 we saw Gamergate with Brexit with the American election uh, and how like a small group of people could influence lar larger groups. The moment is designed to be watched twice in a row by groups of around five where two people take turns watching the movie with the headset on. People then observe the different ways the narrative changes. So how did you find the film? Uh, really interesting. Did it make you think about your relationship with technology? Uh, for me, yeah, and also like a little bit about, you know, like society, about like people not thinking about what they're doing. Yes, I always prefer having an artist um, picking a message for me and then it does whatever it does to me rather than me making my own message. It feels like I would be living in my own bubble. I would like the artist to pick the film for me. I don't want to live inside my bubble any more than I already do. <laughs> it's a bit scary, isn't it? It's scary, yeah, it's a bit scary. What my end game really is just to ask people to consider critically the technology that we use and why it's being used in that way. The moment has its world premiere at Sheffield Dockfest on June 7th. After that, the caravan will hit the road across the UK. Realize, whose clients have included Mars and LG, specialize in emotion detection and neuromarketing. They use facial cues to gauge consumers' reactions when viewing adverts so that messages can be refined to hit the right spot. And I'm putting that to the test with the help of some classic BBC clips. Now this is great for business, of course. I don't deny that, and I'm quite excited to see where this goes. <laughs> Even throughout more of this video, forget just the timeline of human history, it's showing more and more that every single thing we do is under scrutiny. Every, you can trace a call, you can now s put science to facial recognition on someone watching a computer. I'm kind of sound like a broken record here, but it just, it seems scary. Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> Using just a webcam, realize they're going to measure my emotional response. So you're clearly mapping features of the face here, and it, is it enough to look at the eyebrows to see surprise and the, the curve of the mouth to see happiness or sadness? Yeah, the face is surprisingly re revealing. Uh, we, we human understand body language quite well. It's a huge part. It's, some say, 80% of our communication. 
but uh, computers have not had that ability until now. Right now, we uh, work with